All right, so in this video, we're going to get into a little bit of simulation and gazebo. So what is gazebo? Well, here's another by the book definition. Uh, gazebo is a 3D dynamic simulator with the ability to accurately and efficiently simulate populations of robots in complex indoor and outdoor environments. But wait, there's more. Uh, gazebo offers physics simulation, a suite of sensors, uh, put that one in, in italics, that's an important one, and interfaces for both users and programs. So basically, Gazebo is a simulated world that obeys the laws of physics, and this is where we can test robots or drones. <laughs> so what can we do with Gazebo? Um, well... It's pretty cool. We can actually fly the Artupilot firmware, the real code, on, an, on a simulated drone in the gazebo world. Now, if you took the drone programming primer class, you know that the simulated drone is called SIDL. So we're basically connecting SIDL with gazebo, and we can test that simulated drone in the 3D world. And if you look on the right with that picture, that is actually a picture of the 3DR Iris, and that is sort of the standard drone model that is used for gazebo to test um, Artupilot firmware. So what else can we do with gazebo? Well, we can, just like we could in the drone programming primer, uh, we can use and test Python drone kit scripts um, on our computer to actually control the simulated drone. Now you might be saying, cool, this was already a thing we could do with SIDL. Why do we need to, you know, visualize it? Well, for one, um, the gazebo physics engine is very, very impressive and, and is maybe a little bit more realistic. But the other very important thing about gazebo is that you can simulate various sensors and experiment using them to control or influence flight. Okay, so why do we need gazebo in this course? Well, we know that um, for our capstone project, our taco copter, Precision landing is going to be a very important element of that mission. So, Gazebo is going to help us test um, our precision landing scripts. We can actually access that simulated camera feed right in a drone kit script where we can do some OpenCV computer vision um, based control on the drone. So basically, Gazebo is paramount for testing our OpenCV precision landing scripts and before even using it on a real drone. So what are the benefits? Well, this is kind of just um, recapping, but it saves time. Like, it really saves time. Just imagine that um, you have this new OpenCV script that you want to use with drone kit to control the drone, and you didn't have a way to test it, um, so you just had to go out to the field and test it on a real drone. Well, you go out to the field, it takes like, you know, 10 minutes, 15. It takes another five to make sure all the sensors are working correctly. And then another five whenever you try and run your Python script and you have a syntax error. So, you know, it just really allows you to rapidly prototype right from your computer. So you don't have to make or find all those mistakes out in the field. Um, it definitely <laughs> saves money. It, whenever you're experimenting with new... Um, drone kit Python scripts that'll actually control the drone. Um, those, those situations have a much higher likelihood of you crashing the drone for the drone doing some crazy behavior that you didn't expect. Well, we want to uh, find those crazy scripts in the simulated world before we go out to the real world. And it's the, the last one, save a limb, kind of tongue in cheek, but if the drone did go crazy out in the field while you're testing a new script, well, you have, as many um, in the Artupilot community would say, you have, a, you have a Psycho Wasp drone that's just, you know, out of control, and it can be very dangerous. So, again, you want to be able to, to isolate those crazy um, flights in the simulated world. Okay, so Gazebo does require some a decent amount of computer hardware. Let's go over what that is. So with memory or the RAM, I would recommend uh, four gigabytes. Um, that's kind of the sweet spot. You could obviously go more, but at four gigabytes of RAM, you're you're getting a lot of the 
the good um, behavior out of Gazebo. I've tested it with uh, two gigabytes of RAM and it, it works. It's kind of pushing it a little bit, but it's still maybe getting, you know, 70% of the performance. At one gigabyte, I mean, it still runs, but it, it, it is with pretty bad performance. And what do I mean by bad performance? Well, um, the, the rate at which the simulated world um, is playing is maybe at like 20% of a real-time speed. So it looks like everything's moving in slow motion, which is fine if you have the patience for it, but I, I personally don't. Um, processors. Again, four cores is probably recommended. I have also tested with two cores, and it, it seems to work pretty good still with two cores. You know, it's not the perfect performance, but it's still doing a good job. With one core, it also runs, but again, with bad performance. So if you have um, the recommended computer hardware available to you, definitely use that. If you don't, you might have to experiment around a little bit. Now, the required operating system is actually Linux. So if you have a Windows or Mac PC, you are going to need to uh, set up a virtual machine. The suggested distribution is Ubuntu 18.04. It will work on other distros, but that is what we will be using in this course.